So it's a great pleasure to um, to meet you in person, in person, and also I have a good fellowship with you. So, brothers, sisters in Christ, I bring with me uh, Pastor Leslie from Oka. I want him to share with us the ministry, what God has done in Mukade. Okay, I think I pass this time to Pastor Leslie to share um, the ministry in Mukka. Uh, selamat pagi semua. Saya akan gunakan bahasa berkongsi untuk kita semua. Saya harap uh, dia boleh membantu. Oke, okay, uh, pada mulanya terima kasih untuk uh, kesempatan ini. Dan sekali lagi saya mengucapkan terima kasih atas dorongan, sokongan dari kamu semua dari segi doa dan dari segi keuangan. Semoga Tuhan memberkati kalian semua. Dan pada pagi ini saya akan berkunci secara uh, menyeluruh apa yang Tuhan telah lakukan uh, di dalam pekerjaannya di gereja kita di muka. Oke, okay? yang kamu lihat di dalam slide adalah di mana tempat gereja muka. Oke. Okay. Uh, minta tolong yang di... Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, uh, untuk... Uh, tema bagi ke, uh, sepanjang uh, gereja muka kami menggunakan menjangkau jiwa untuk kerjaan Tuhan. Oke, okay, tujuan adalah supaya setiap umat uh, gereja muka menjadi orang yang memberitakan Injil, pemberita Injil. Dan kalau kita lihat dari segi, okay, kalau kita lihat dari segi kurungan itu Injil untuk melanau ini adalah Uh, dikhususkan ya supaya menjangkau orang lokal ya sebab uh, muka uh, kebanyakan uh, penduduk muka adalah orang Melanau jadi kami memfokuskan supaya Injil lebih kepada orang Melanau ya selain daripada bangsa-bangsa lain oke okay. oke okay, ini rumah panjang yang telah kami Injili dari tahun 2014 sampai 2023 ada 14 buah tempat. Oke, okay? ini hasil doa kita semua. Oke, okay, ini kehadiran kebatian di gereja kami, di gereja kita di muka. Oke, okay? uh, dan pelayanan dan penginjilan atau perencangan yang pertama, okay, kita ada pelayanan anak sekolah minggu. Oke, okay? ini adalah antara anak yang kami layani. Oke. Okay? Uh. Saya akan kursi secara menyeluruh. Oke, okay, pelayanan muda mudi juga. Oke, okay. ini gambar muda mudi. Kebanyakan mereka adalah penuntut uh, politeknik, UITM, SMK yang berada di muka. Oke, okay. oke, okay, ini uh, adalah waktu hujung minggu sebab kebanyakan mereka adalah bermalam di gereja muka. Jadi, kami bagi mereka. Firman Tuhan, kami kunci firman Tuhan untuk mendorong dari segi iman mereka. Oke, okay, ini pelayanan hujung minggu juga. Oke, okay, kami bagi mereka makanan. Oke, okay, sebab mereka jauh dari keluarga dan memerlukan pertolongan dari segi makanan. Dan sekali lagi saya mengucapkan terima kasih kepada uh, First Baptist yang telah menolong kami di dalam pelayanan mudah mudi dari segi keuangan. Oke, okay, terima kasih semua. Oke okay, dan pelayanan kaum ibu, oke okay, kita ada membuat pelayanan kaum ibu. Oke okay, ini dari uh, waktu oke okay, uh, seminar kaum ibu yang telah kami buat. Oke okay, ini pasal seria dan istri saya waktu seminar kaum ibu tahun lepas. Oke okay, penginjilan, oke okay, kalau kita melihat dari segi penginjilan. Ini adalah penginjilan yang saya lakukan pertama kali untuk keluarga Melanau. Ah, ya, pertama kali saya berdiri di uh, keluarga Melanau. Oke, okay. uh, ini uh, di tempat rumah panjang lain penginjilan. 
Oke, okay, ini di rumah panjang juga waktu membuat follow up di rumah panjang. Oke, okay, ini kami berdoa untuk orang rumah panjang waktu penginjilan. Oke, okay, ajaib Tuhan dalam penginjilan. Oke, okay, saya kunsikan uh, uh, sedikit daripada keajaiban Tuhan dalam penginjilan. Oke, okay, uh, saudara ini dia telah berkawin 8 tahun, tapi belum ada anak. Setelah didoa, dia mempunyai seorang anak laki-laki. Oke, okay, ini uh, saudari juga. Dia setelah berkawin 11 tahun, belum mempunyai anak, telah didoa, Tuhan memperkati dengan seorang anak laki-laki juga. Oke, okay, ini pun sama. Oke, okay. Seorang uh, saudari kita yang mampu, uh, berkawin enam tahun, setelah di, di, di doa, Tuhan memberkati dia. Oke, okay. okay, pekerjaan Tuhan dalam penginjilan, ya, kalau kita lihat. Oke, okay, ini pekerjaan Tuhan, oke. Okay. Ya, secara, secara pengeluruh. Kalau kamu lihat gambar itu, dia seperti kepala naga. Oke, okay, ini azimat yang kami... Uh, uh, apa uh, pecahkan hancurkan ya di dalam nama Yesus oke okay. uh, ini semua uh, kejaiban Tuhan di dalam penginjilan oke okay. ini seorang uh, mak mamak tua apabila telah di di doa dia telah dapat uh, bangkit semula oke okay. ya, kejaiban Tuhan Oke, okay, aset penginjilan ini adalah bagaimana kita menjangkau sebab kita ingin memulakan satu pelayanan baru di uh, area Sungai Arit tidak jauh dari area Tatau. Kalau dari muka, dua jam baru sampai di Sungai Arit. Sebab di area Sungai Arit banyak rumah panjang yang belum pernah mendengar Injil tetapi telah mengatakan diri kami Kristen tapi tidak pernah mendengar Injil. Cuma mengatakan, oh kami Kristen. Jadi kami telah membuat sabe. Ya, satu tanah yang di tepi jalan uh, Penbunio. Di mana tanah tersebut um, dijadikan tanah pekuburan untuk orang Kristen yang kami jangkau nanti. Sebab mereka memerlukan, eh pastor, kalau ada tanah baru kami mau ikut. Sebelum meninggal, Mau cari dulu tanah pekuburan, baru mau menerima Yesus. Oke, okay, ini cerita dia, aset penginjilan. Oke, okay. oke, okay, ini uh, penginjilan, uh, uh, sabe tanah pekuburan. Oke, okay, uh, dan seterusnya, pagi ini saya ingin berkunci satu uh, pekerjaan Tuhan yang sungguh luar biasa, yaitu mengenai terika karunia. Muka mungkin setengah daripada kamu telah mendengar cerita ini, ataupun mungkin. Belum lagi pada pagi ini saya kunsikan kami telah membuka satu tadika. Oke, visi dia memudayakan pendidikan ke dalam kehidupan masyarakat setempat. Bagaimana uh, cerita ini ataupun pelayanan tadika ini menyentuh kehidupan saya? Sebab kalau kamu tahu di muka dia ada politeknik, dia ada UITM, dia ada Sentek, sekarang uh, Kolej Selila Taib, uh, uh, Kemahiran Mara, dan uh, Community, Kolej Community. Tetapi apa yang saya lihat, tidak ada orang muka sendiri yang memenuhkan Kolej-Kolej yang saya sebut tadi. Jadi saya tanya, eh di mana orang muka sendiri? Sebab, kan, se sebab pendidikan dekat dengan kehidupan mereka. Tetapi tidak ramai orang muka sendiri yang mengisi kolej tersebut. Yang datang adalah orang Miri, orang Kucing, orang Sibu, orang Kapit untuk mengisi kolej tersebut. Jadi saya sabe, saya tanya, eh kenapa tidak ada orang muka? Jadi saya tanya uh, uh, budak yang telah tercicir, yang di rumah panjang, saya tanya, kenapa kamu tidak mau sekolah? Jadi jawaban mereka, saya malu pasta. Eh kenapa malu? Sebab saya tidak pandai membaca, saya sebab saya tidak pandai menulis, sebab saya tidak pandai mengira. Eh, kenapa begitu? Sebab dari awal kehidupan mereka asas pendidikan tidak ada. Waktu mereka di sekolah, 
Mereka tidak diajar dengan betul, bukan saya menyalahkan. Tetapi dari segi pembelajaran asas, waktu mereka di dalam tedika ataupun prasekolah, mereka tidak dididik dengan betul. Jadi saya tersentuh dengan hal ini, jadi saya uh, uh, kongsikan uh, bisi ini dengan Pastor Daniel. Jadi Pastor Daniel suruh saya uh, apa, survey apa yang perlu dilakukan. Jadi apa yang berlaku dari uh, awal tahun ini, uh, kita telah memulakan pelayanan tadika. Ya, telah bermula pada 9 Januari lepas dan sekarang uh, sudah dua bulan, satu bulan lebih telah memulakan pembelajaran asas. Eh, uh, maksud saya untuk memperkenalkan, suai kenal dengan mereka menunggu bulan emas di mana mereka akan memulakan pelajaran sepenuhnya. Oke, okay. oke okay, perencangan untuk tedika itu bukan saja untuk mengajar, tetapi kami uh, apa nama merancang untuk membuka sekolah buta huruf. Pada masa mengajar yang buta huruf itu, kami memperkenalkan firman Tuhan kepada mereka. Ini yang berlaku. Berarti ini uh, satu apa nama cara menyampaikan Injil secara tidak sengaja kepada jiwa seseorang. Ini yang kami ingin lakukan setelah uh, uh, apa nama tadika uh, pembelajaran anak-anak kecil sudah stable dan kami akan melakukan sekolah buta huruf pada hujung minggu. Ya di tadika uh, yang telah kita buka tadi lakukan dan kami akan buat perpustakaan Sekiranya kamu ada lebih buku, mungkin satu hari kamu boleh hantar ke muka. Ya, untuk memberkati uh, uh, kawan kita di muka. Ataupun saudara-saudari kita yang seriman dengan kita di muka. Oke, dan seterusnya kami akan melakukan pusat tuition. Untuk menolong yang kurang dari segi matematik, apa-apa pembelajaran yang mereka perlu dari pada pertolongan. Ini kami akan lakukan nanti. Masa akan datang kami akan lakukan pada hujung minggu untuk menolong yang yang memerlukan pertolongan dari mereka yang kurang dalam pembelajaran. Oke okay, ini uh, situasi terika kita, ini tandas mereka. Oke okay. okay, ini uh, uh, pemandangan dari segi depan, ya yeah. uh, intern. Oke okay. okay, ini dalam bilik derajah untuk sekarang ini. Oke, okay, ini bilik derajah yang kedua sebab sekarang ada dua bilik derajah ya, umur 4 hingga 6 tahun dan umur uh, 3 dan 4 tahun. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, ini kitchen mereka. Oke. Okay. Okay, ini adalah murid yang kita ada sekarang ini. Pada mula dia hari pertama ada 11 orang. Dan selepas itu ada 17 orang. Sekarang kita mempunyai 19 orang murid keseluruhan dia. Oke. Okay. Uh, untuk pengetahuan kita semua, setelah dua bulan, hampir dua bulan kita telah memulakan terdika tersebut, pada hari pertama, murid semua menangis. Tidak mau pergi ke sekolah. Saya pada masa itu dengan istri saya, ya keluarga saya ada bersama saya pada pagi ini, saya ada bersama menyambut hari pertama mereka. Dan saya pun menjadi guru sementara. Ya, kalau yang menangis, saya terus lawat. Istri saya pun sama tolong guru pada masa itu. Uh, sebab saya melihat hari pertama guru tidak dapat kop dengan keadaan. Ada yang menangis, ada cari emak, ada yang cari bapa. Tetapi apa yang berlaku sekarang ini, mereka sungguh seronok di sekolah. Ya, sebab uh, ada yang kebanyakan daripada murid di rumah panjang tersebut bersekolah di terdika tersebut. Jadi uh, anak mereka, Mak, kamu tidak usah hantar saya. Kamu tengok dari uh, pintu dan saya akan berjalan sendiri ke sekolah. Uh, okay. Ini uh, kebaikan. Dan, dan seterusnya, apa yang berlaku? Keluarga mereka sudah mengenali sekarang betapa pentingnya pendidikan di dalam kehidupan mereka. Uh, ini yang berlaku di Uh, terdeka kita di Tintin Bayit, uh, di Karunia, selama satu bulan lebih kita telah beroperasi. Banyak perubahan. 
Dan ada lagi dari keluarga uh, dari rumah panjang lain. Yang 19 orang ini adalah dari tiga buah rumah panjang. Di sekeliling itu ada lebih uh, lebih 22 buah rumah panjang. Kita belum promosi lagi. Ya, sebab kita baru mulakan uh, pelayanan terdeka. Jadi kita takut guru yang dua itu tidak dapat kop uh, dengan kalau murid lebih dari uh, 20 orang. Jadi kita cuba dulu. Ya, kalau kehendak Tuhan, ya, doa untuk kita, doa untuk uh, terdeka kita uh, terdeka kurnia supaya ada guru dihantar dan ada pembantu dihantar untuk membangunkan uh, pendidikan di kalangan umat-umat Tuhan di muka. Oke. Okay? Oke, okay, ini guru. Uh, guru yang telah kita uh, uh, apa, tawarkan untuk menjadi guru mereka. Kedua-dua mereka mempunyai pendidikan diploma awal kanak-kanak dengan setma di kucing nih. Oke. Okay? Oke ini uh, waktu mereka belajar ya ada yang mengantuk ada yang menyimpan kaki di atas meja. <laughs> Oke ini guru uh, uh, Regina yang tadi guru Ruth. Oke cikgu Ruth. Oke, Oke uh, jadi terus menyokong kami dalam doa uh, dan terus menyokong kami dalam apa saja yang Tuhan pimpin. Untuk kamu di dalam pelayanan uh, Tuhan di muka. Oke, okay, sekian terima kasih. Tuhan memberkati. Oke, okay, thank you, Pastor Leslie. Um, I can see the the growing of the church in muka. When we first move in, it's not easy. It's the hardest grounds as far as the gospel is concerned. You know, talking about Muka, you know, they, uh, you know, it's our, our PYT, the governor plays, you know, a lot of them. Uh, they said they are Christian, they are so religious, and yet most of them do not know Christ. When we first, uh, I asked Pastor Leslie, we're going to send you to Muka to start a new work in Muka. Almost a few months, I think about three to four months, only the family worship the lord there's nobody no contact really pioneers the home mission board uh started the works is a pioneers work in muka there is no christian believers christian friends help us you know to start a new work i can see the why we start muka because we want to reach out to this group malanao group the people's group. We want to concentrate on the people's group in this moment. The home mission board, the coming years, we're going to see many uh, people's group in Sarawak. We're going to uh, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We're going to reach out this coming years. Two groups that I'm targeting, we are targeting, is that talking about Kadayan. Kadayan is the aunt's unrich people's groups less you're talking about in Bakanu area i've been there you know um together with one friends and we have a context how to reach out how to move into that area another another people's group is that in Murun area not many people like to go into that remote area it's very expensive and very hot and difficult to reach out the area the punan and penan so we i already contacted two guys how we can move together and partners together to do the ministry among this group another group sometime we are in the midst of us you know i challenge the home mission board i challenge the pastors and our missionaries to reach out the rural chinese community we can see that the response from the uh, Chinese community in the rural is overwhelmed. I can see in Ruban, you know, through the community project, even through the, you know, uh, during the pandemics, we give the foods to the various families. And they came back to us. We never receive a gift or contribution from others. 
but your church came to our life, came to our family, and showed the love that we never received before. So brothers, I can see the work of the Lord among these rural Chinese. This year, I challenged the home mission board, challenged the missionary, we're going to organize together the, all the rural Chinese in one place in how we're going to enhance that ministry. Because we can see they can speak Iban, no problems, you know. I can talk and preach in Iban, they can listen. They can understand Iban. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, that is the focus of the Home Mission Board the years to come. Even last year, we can see that even, you know, the pandemics, the COVID sometime, uh, uh, you know, we try to restrict ourselves not to reach out, not to preach the gospel. But we thank God that even last year, uh, you know, 11 new longhouse we established. We have members, we have believers there to worship the Lord. And we have a new town center in Syrian. So we send our workers to the Kutas Marahan Big Church. Okay, Kutas Marahan, we take a lead to start the new work in Syrian. We are a small church. I, I asked Sister Melia, you go there. You stay in, in Syrian and start the work among the Bidayo group. So we thank God that we established the work in Syrian. And even last year, we we're talking about, you know, um, people accepted the Lord is 273 under the work of the Home Mission Board, through the work of the pastors and missionary, and 208 have been baptized. That is last year itself. Why I want to share that, brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel is a matter to our God. Gospel need to reach out to every corner of the people's life. So let me share with you this morning, Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to 43. Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to 43. One of the criminals who hung there, how insulted him. Are you, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you today, today you will be with me in paradise. Many years back, I met one man, you know, in one of the uh, funeral service. They asked me to conduct the funeral service. In Ibans, you know, we have to sort out some of the understanding, some of the culture and custom. So I gathered a group of leaders and a group of the family members. And one of these men, if a well known by the people, is an educated man. When I share about how we're going to do this funeral service for their family, so I, and then he said to me, Pastor, you stop sharing of that uh, message. And then I said, Why? I've been Christian, he said, I've been Christian 30 years. 20 years I listened to that message. Then I asked him again, do you know Jesus in your life? He just keep quiet. Brothers, sisters in Christ, sometimes we felt that we are so long in our religious, you know, life. To conduct our religious life, our Christian life. Do we really know? Do we really know that the Lord Jesus Christ in our life? So this passage is talking about, and then he said, then I said to him, tonight, some of the family members, some of your family members, the friends are coming to give a last respect to these late brothers. 
If you already know the Lord, it's good. Thanks God. But there are many people out there who do not know the Lord. The message is for these people. The message of the gospel is for those who do not know Christ. The message of death, life, is for this group of people. So this is what happened when Jesus died on the cross. There are two men, the two criminals. One from the, uh, on the right side, one on the left side. So on the other side, insult Jesus, embark Jesus. He mocked Jesus. Maybe this man will try to follow and try to quote some of the, um, the words from others who insult Jesus, who have mock, mocking Jesus, you know. And the man rebuked him. He said, rebuke him. Do, not, do you not fear God? Don't you fear God in your life? We deserve to be punished because we are you know doing a bad thing or a wrong person uh, we are criminals we are robbers but this man done nothing wrong we deserve to be punished so brothers why jesus you know died on that on the on the cross so one of the main, one of the things that three things that I like to share, I try to encourage myself and every one of us is talking about the readiness of Jesus to save others, to save the people. No matter how uh, you know difficulties, no matter how that person, the background of that person, when. He wants to save that person. It doesn't matter. The time is, does not matter to our Lord. And then, talking about the amazing faith. The amazing faith, I can see that, you know, throughout the Bibles, I've been encouraged by this passage, by the one of the criminals, one of the robbers, that the same you know, I've uh, uh, been crucified the same with Jesus. The faith that in, in him is so amazing. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. So it's talking about how he respond to Jesus. How he see Jesus. What he see Jesus is that he saw that Jesus able he saw that Jesus, see Jesus able to save him. He's, that Jesus able to forgive him. He see himself that he is the sinners in his life. The amazing faith that in him. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the power of that cross is so amazing and so divine to every mankind. So when we see Jesus, when we see Jesus, how do we respond to him? How do we respond to him? He said sometimes, you know, we're talking about ourselves. Sometimes we're talking about our own church. Sometimes we're talking about our organizations. But how about the simple message that we need others need to listen to? That? The simple message of that gospel do we really bring that simple message jesus you know when he's talking about uh, the salvation the message that he want to share to that man on that cross on the cross is so simple you will be with me with me in the paradise i will remember you you will be forgiven you will be with me in the paradise so jesus talking about you know how he can respond to every needs of the people so brothers and sisters in christ so what we need to do is that 
We need to acknowledge of His Lordship in our life. Every corner, every areas of our life. So brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes we feel, you know, no, that is not the right way. No, not, that is not the times. When Leslie, Pastor Leslie shared with me about the kindergarten, we have nothing to offer to the people at that time. And how to, to carry it out, how to implement. I don't have any experience, he don't have any experience. So he just shared with me. Pastor Leslie, he share his vision, he share his heart. Let us do it together. Let us do it together. You know, they just use the, uh, the house. That is a temporary place, actually, for the that long house. Can we use that place? That, lo that place is a, the storage house for the community to keep all their kitchens, uh, 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 utensils, or any uh, uh, other uh, things for the long house. Can they have to? They read all the things and they will uh, so kindly enough let the place for the kindergarten. If you wait for the building by itself, if you wait for the building to be built just for that kindergartens, we never ever do it in the short time. It takes maybe two to three years. So let us do it now. Don't wait. Today we have to decide. You know, we need to reach out to the, these little kids. You know, he didn't share, the, he missed that sharing. Within this one, two, or these two months, the kids know how to read ABC. They now know how to read one, two, three. They've never been go to school before. We thank God for the response from the parents. We know that long house is so difficult to reach out before. Even Pastor Leslie, myself, last time when we reached that long house, nobody want to listen to you. Nobody want to listen to your message, to your preaching, to the Christians, uh, missionaries. They just keep by themselves. So when we move in into their life, through a community, community project, we can see that the transformation of life happened in these people. That was possible because we bring the gospel, we bring the word of God to change the life of the people. So brothers, sisters, and Christ, the readiness of Jesus to forgive that person. He said, Lord, remember me. Jesus accepted it. Jesus will you respond it. Now, today, no, you will be with me in paradise. So brothers, are we ready to bring the simple message of the gospel to every people's life? People's groups need the Lord. People around us need the Lord. Last night after I came back from a prayer meeting, a church prayer meeting, I saw the ambulance near to my neighbor, near to my house, my neighbor's house. And then after I told my wife, let us go here and what happened to our neighbor there. You know, they are not Christian. I think he got a heart attack and died instantly on the spot. That man, we knew that he drank a lot. He abused the family. When I knew about that last night, I, so I cried in my heart, you know. Then I went to the family and prayed for their children and my wife and uh, my families. And just ministered to them in that time. So brothers, our times is very little. The agency of reaching out to our peoples is now. It's not tomorrow. So the amazing fact that happens that uh, been to, 
you know, uh, uh, that half and that person is so amazing, the faith that he has. So what happened is that he knew that Jesus can save him. He knew that Jesus able to offer something is so precious in his life. That is salvation. So brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to offer something that the world cannot offer. We need to give something that the, that, that the world cannot give to our people to bring a real transformation of life in the people's life. You see the two tips, there are different perspectives. They're the ones that mock Jesus, they're the ones that insult Jesus, they're the ones that, Lord, no, you are my Lord. That the one they see that Jesus can, you know, uh, can forgive him. He know that he is sinners. He's able to see that Jesus is the savior of his life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what is our response in our life toward this simple message? The, 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 the things that Jesus want to, also want to teach us this morning, is talking about is the, the great promise of our Lord to every believers. What is the great promise? We need to move forward in, from this into that. We need to believe our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the promise that Jesus gave is that today, it's not tomorrow, you know. It's not later, today. You will be in the... In the you will be with me in the paradise. That's what Jesus said to that man. So, sometimes we felt that even though this man can offer, you know, Lord, bring me down from that cross. He can say that. Sometimes he can, you know, sometimes we are so selfish in our prayers. In our life, sometimes, Lord, touch me. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, strengthen me. Sometimes we are so selfish in our prayers. But, uh, you know, when we are talking about that, let us see what the cross can do for all mankind. Jesus offered that to men today. Not tomorrow, not next month. We need to bring the gospel to every corner of the people life in this world. So we thank God that we send, we are able to send two missionary, young missionary to Bangladesh. Why we send them to overseas? Why not in Sarawak? There are so many people who don't know Christ. We think about our, all our, ourselves, you know. Sometimes we feel that can we send the people outside beyond our capabilities? I say yes. The world is belong to the Lord. The people needs the Lord. They are now in the Bangladesh. I got the report that they now try to mix around with the, uh, the peoples over there. They have a, uh, a few friends already they contacted able to make a new friends there so brothers even though it's so difficult to get a visa uh, to stay in bangladesh in long term during the process of getting the visa you know a lot of a uh, hassle and one day last week before they went in they called me we got the visa already pastor but but the officer, the officer and that embassy, they ask money. One person, one thousand. Can we give money, Pastor? I said, no. I said, no. Even though they get Brother Amos, you know, interview him in the, in the room alone. Came out, then Amos, 
What they say to you? After they came out, they called me. They said they asked for money. I told you already, why they are so long? Why they are so long? Issue the visa to you because they want that, that money. But you need to be patient. Strong in faith. Be clear about yourself in your Christian living. You know what? They got their passport and then they ran off. And then they said, they, they began the tower, Lima Rato Saja. They said that they ran away. They got the, the passport and the, with the visa already. Not a single cent we give to the person. If we live in our, with our principle as a Christian lady, we need to teach, disciple our people the right thing to do. The Lord will bless us. That is my principle. That is my, our life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to bring the simple message to our simple people. There we are listen to that message of salvation. So brothers and sisters in Christ, I just want to thank you for the APC, for your prayer, and for your support of the Home Mission Board. And we thank God. You know, we um, our Kutus Marahans is, um, we ask for your prayer for our building. You know, we thank God the government grant us a piece of land, 1.5 acres, not far from yours, yours here. It's, a, it's not easy to get that. Four times have been rejected. The fifth time, finally, the Lord hands the Lord's favor upon the church. So we are uh, another stage. We ask the Lord will approve the, you know, the plans um, soon. So we need you to pray for us. And thanks God that even uh, we want to do a Chinese ministry in our church because one of the pastors, you know, they're from other church. They want to do it. Partner with us. Let us start the Chinese ministry in Kutas Marahan. So don't wait, brothers. Now is the time of harvesting. Now is time for us to, 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 to do the work of the Lord. Thank you. God bless you.